friends, welcome back to the Film Alchemist Podcast, the show where we take the movies we love, break them apart, to find out what gives them their magic. I'm your host, Josh Griffey, joined as always by my friend, co-host, and guy who likes to kiss tiny imaginary women. Ugh. God, I hate with, you, Alex, With his that, lips. Stop, Alex Dandino. They just get just, lost I'm in just there until he... Yeah. Keep it and going. it's all greasy because the chapstick and the crevasses. Neither here nor there. I legitimately <laughs> just said my name so we can just keep moving. This bit is tearing me apart. Let's go. That's what the lips said. Neither here nor there. Uh, it's official. We're on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Phil Malcolm is pod. Just a bevy of fucking Cracker Jacks like that over there. If you want more of those great lip Cracker Jacks, go over to Patreon.com slash Phil Malcolm is pod. We have a huge Patreon exclusive library. So if you like the show... There's a ton of awesome episodes over there that uh, you can find. You can also make your voice heard. You can help direct the kind of movies that make it onto the show. Uh, we let you guys vote on stuff over there. We got mini series. We got commentaries. You can even have us record a double feature of your very selection. So, again, that's patreon.com slash Pod. It truly is the best way to help support and grow the show. It means the world to us uh, that there are people out there that do support the show. So, thank you. If you're about to be one of those people, pat yourself on the back. You're killing it. You're fucking killing it. If you can't financially support, there's also a lot of cool things you can do to help us out. Uh, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel, Film Alchemist. You can follow all the socials. You can make sure to share everything we post, right? Share. And even uh, the, the basic episodes, man. If you get an episode, let's say you listen on Spotify. You're a hip young person, right? Pause your to Swift. Text a friend an episode, man. We'll take it from there, Right? There's a lot of things you can do to help so us easy. out. Another thing. Yeah, make sure you leave five-star ratings and reviews, too, so we can really fucking stick it to the algorithm. We can you blow the algorithm out of the water. If you can't afford to join our Patreon, which is totally fine, that's the way that you can really help. Like, above all else, we would love it if you, like, take... You don't have to write an extensive review, but if you take, like, five minutes to go to every single app you use rate our show and just write like this show rules or this show is nice or i know that alex gets picked on a lot by that host griffey but how dare you still a nice guy you had to turn your nice fucking plea into a little fucking woe is me you're like right little exactly orphan alley. because we all know little you orphan absolutely alley over there we all know you absolutely would never have taken the opportunity to do the same. Either way. I never would. That I, one was I formulating a, a, a bookend lip joke? Perhaps. That, yeah, thank you. That but is 1,000% no. the best way to help our show if you cannot. And it's, again, <laughs> totally cool if you cannot yes. do Patreon. That's the way we need your help. Money issues are what they are. But that or a direct message to a friend who likes movies with an episode, those are free things you can do that help shows like us. Do, be that person who like puts it on in the car. That's like aw that awkward thing. Like you got to hear this show, Trap and they're like, Haha, "Great, thanks." They'll probably like Trap it. Trap them. <laughs> yeah. All <laughs> right. All that aside, we're just coming in blistering this morning. Uh we're here to finish our month, a la Spielberg, right? Mm. So this is our last episode in this curation uh, of the Spielberg month, and we're finishing on a movie that was really huge in my life when I was a kid. We're gonna finish with same, Hulk. same. Same. So it's Peter Pan, which I kind of on a base level have always hated Peter Pan, right? It's kind of on my list of like turn of the screw. Like there's just stories that at this point you're like, if there's another adaptation of that, I'm out. People sure. keep doing them and they're not getting anything out of them, right? How many, to times, me, have, how, how many times have you seen an adaptation of turn of the screw? Oh, there's at least five or six. Like a lot. I just and I hate in your them. lifetime, you're almost thirty nine, and in your lifetime, you've watched all of them. If you're if you're a horror movie person, you'll start a movie and you're like, "Why does this seem familiar?" And I hate it. Oh my yeah. god, they're doing a turn of the screw riff, and you just—it's a stupid, fucking, terrible story that yeah. people, because it was so poorly written and had no answers in it, people started being like, "Well, this is masterful." Neither here nor there. I'm not here to yell about turn of the screw. We're here to yell about why Steven Spielberg hates the movie Hook. Yeah, so I looked famously. up, I found an interview, right? I think he did the interview with Empire. Uh-huh. Right? And so I have some quotes. You right? Know, and he says, I want to see Hook again. Yeah. I still don't I like that, that movie. I'm hoping that someday I'll see it and perhaps like some of it. Mm -hmm. He claims that there were issues that he didn't understand the material when he was shooting, which I think is horseshit. Yeah. He didn't totally. understand the guy who doesn't fucking raise his kids because he's out working. 
The guy who that's his won entire that's close encounters again. Yeah. The guy who won thousand percent has made like basically prequels to the Fablemans for the last like thirty years of yes. his career. <laughs> I felt like a fish out of water making hook. I didn't have confidence in the script. Well, it's a long script, maybe. I had confidence in the first act and I had confidence in the epilogue. So he liked all the London shit, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't Which... have confidence in the body of it. I didn't quite know what I was doing, and I tried to paint over my insecurities with production value. The more insecure I felt about it, the bigger and more colorful the sets became. This movie is just a a close encounters for kids. This yeah. is another movie about a man who likes his job more than his family, mm -hmm. right? This is him excusing why he film never never Neverland is the fucking great you know filmmaking journey, yeah, right. But in this one, he gets to bring his kids back instead of riding off with the aliens. But they are literally <laughs> the exact same journey. But it's when I was a kid, it was this big fucking bombastic movie. It was colorful. It was beautiful. I wanted mm -hmm. to be in that Lost Boys treehouse, right? Yeah. I love fucking Captain Hook. I love Smee, right? Glenn Close yeah. has a weird-ass cameo, right? The pirates mm -hmm. were great. The kids were great. I love the Crocodile Tower. I remember yep. going to Kmart, and my mom caved. She would usually let us buy little books. But one day she caved. And I got the Captain Hook hand that had the three different hooks. You could choose which one was up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. like a hook, a knife, and something else. And then we got the coconut sword that had a yeah. bell in it. Ding, uh -huh. ding. Same. So as you, it made this amazing bell sound. Yeah. And those were some of my favorites. You know, I was telling my kids, I think I still had the hook somewhere. I loved it that much. Right. And again, to me, it was Robin Williams, who, bar none, is probably my favorite actor who ever lived. Like, just, I loved that man. And watching him get unearthed and fully become Peter Pan at the end of that movie, just, I fucking loved that movie. Yeah. And again, I'm kind of cynical, right? The same way I didn't like E.T. because I was a kid whose dad left. I think I really liked the idea of your dad coming to, back to get you. Yeah, yeah. Right? And so when I was a kid, this was like a birthday, you know, we're going to watch a movie, we're watching Hook or The Mask. Those were like my two birthday movies. Yeah, The Mask was always, yeah. Yeah, I, I fucking love this movie. And honestly, watching it now as a kid, there there's you're some warts. You're, you're, an, and adult, it's you're long. an adult now. Well, with my kids. Yes, correct. Oh, I'm with adult. your kids. <laughs> kids that I didn't abduct. They're mine. Um, Yeah. So it's different. I see some of the cracks in it that I didn't as a kid. Mm -hmm. I still love it. I still like there's still enough there. And I could just be nostalgia. I'm sure there are audience members who are like, that's nostalgia goggles. Maybe, man. But I don't give a fuck. I like the movie Hook. And I again, to reiterate, in the Spielberg documentary, right, his massive propaganda piece, there's one thing when Kathleen Kennedy says, and some of them didn't work. The fucking shot they show is the fucking visual to that voiceover mm -hmm. is Robin Williams, Peter Pan gliding over the map of Neverland, right? That wonderful shot from my childhood. Beautiful shot. I think it's fucking insane. I think it's insane to assume that he didn't know what he was doing, this and that. It's fucking crazy to say that this is the worst movie Steven Spielberg's ever made. Yeah. It's a perfectly fine childhood romp. Mm -hmm. And I still enjoy it. Alex, opening thoughts on Hook. I mean, pretty much almost verbatim for me, That is, those are my thoughts. Like, I I, I always loved this movie. I, I think it. that... Love it. Yeah, I, I get it. Like, when you're... I'm in, yeah, like I'm in my mid 30s now and watching it, it's one of those things. I'm like, I mean, no movie is this perfect. Like, look, all Spielberg movies are um, incredible. He is an incredible director. There is no, there is no doubt of that. People who would doubt it are stupid. Yes. So when you watch a movie like Hook that he claims is this like, almost like sideshow piece that he's like, oh God, I can't even watch it. It's so bad. I'm like. That's Spielberg's version of unwatchable movie is this absolutely awesome yeah. childhood, like childhood, like reimagining this oh. nostalgia train Directi like, directors who would kill their mom to have I a mean, movie like yeah. hook. Yeah. There are and for him, it's trash. It's unwatchable. For him, it's film. trash. <laughs> that is like that is like the that is the weirdest and kind of the funniest yeah. thing about Steven Spielberg's reaction to it is he's just like, oh, God. Oh, I'm so I'm so embarrassed that that movie came out. I'm like, it's it's dude. part of his like propaganda apparatus, right? Because mm -hmm. this is the thing. Don't don't fucking play coy with me, Steven. You were the Neo of filmmaking, as I learned in the Fablemans, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
let's not act like this is some piece of subtlety where you're trying to like really fucking weave in narrative threads. Yeah, this on. is Peter Pan is as surface level a story as has ever existed. And so is this. I don't believe yeah. for a second it's, that he didn't understand what was happening in this. It's movie. the most That's not obvious, the movie that we saw. So in that Empire article, I read I read another I read another quote where he's yeah the um he's like I'm pretty much I think up until he gets whisked away, that movie is pretty great. And then every yeah, like you like you were saying like that was the quote that I read as well from that Empire article, but I just think that's kind of unfair in general. Like to be. And what did you think was going to happen when you signed on to do the Peter Pan movie? Yeah, it's a strange thing. And, like, I, I read a lot about the production notes yesterday. Like, it took over, like, 11 sound stages at Universal lot. Like, it's... It's big. It, it's a big movie, yeah. Like, I get, I get being overwhelmed by it. That makes total sense. Because the scope of it is unbelievable. But... Yeah. It's fucking Steven Spielberg. And well, this also, is this the was, era... Also, like, a year or two right before he dropped Schindler's List and Jurassic... This was 91? 89? No. No. This was like 93 or 4, man. This is after Jurassic 94 Park. was when he dropped his, his best double year, right? The, Hook was Hook was after all that. Like, was it, it really? is... No, Hook is 91. 91, sorry. So this was so, like two years before he has the best year of his career <laughs> where he drops Jurassic Park and Schindler. So this is in that he's done the color purple. That was not super well received. He did um, Amistad as well, right? So he's probably in that phase where he wants to make these bigger, more adult movies. They're not clicking. He goes back to the well of childhood fantasy. Right. And I think when people don't love it, it hurt him. And so I think that I think there's a part of that. But again, I think if you look at this movie on its components, again, the opening act of this movie is fucking fantastic. Right. Right? This movie has the problem that a lot of movies have when a director is this successful, is they all need to be cut to 90 minutes. Yeah. Right? So if you rein them in, you wanna, it would be better. Yeah. If you no want to talk about what is too much, it's the it's there's just there's just so much movie. Like there are yes. parts that absolutely there, there's huge chunks that lack any proportion. I think what's interesting whatsoever. is like so this is this is Spielberg because to me Hook is like to be honest, Hook's like the beginning of the run. Like yeah, this is like at this point he's done all the Indiana Jones movies, mm -hmm. so he's proven that he can fucking rock that action adventure shit beyond anybody else's abilities. Uh E.T., Close Encounters, Color Purple, Empire of the Sun. Like, he's doing things that no one else can do. Hooks, to me, the beginning of this run, and it's the beginning of, you know, besides, obviously, Schindler's List, which is its own, like, mm -hmm. at this point, almost its own genre in terms of, like, the monolith of Steven Spielberg. Mm -hmm. um, to me... Hook is the beginning of this thing where it's like, oh, man, if there's one person who's going to understand how to make this action adventure compelling and fun and, like, push the limits of the visuals, it's Steven Spielberg. Why would he not be the guy? And I right. I think that that's a really – it's a really hard thing to do when you're the – it's the first movie out of the gate like that because the next one after this is fucking Jurassic Park. Like – yes. Of course, it's less good than Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park is literally the movie. I had I was talking with someone about this the other night. I literally was still I st I said it is still one of the few movies that the CGI absolutely holds up. I don't right. Shit, what anybody? So here's says. how here's where we went. Hook because he he did it always right after Indiana Jones, not yep. a beloved movie. No. Hook, Jurassic Park, Schindler's List, Lost World, pretty fucking bad movie. Right, not a, not a great movie, but you got to go back to the well. Yeah, um, Amistad. Amistad. Eh, not my favorite movie. I haven't seen it as an adult. I remember watching it with my parents as a kid and not digging it. Uh, and hey, then, yeah, uh, and Saving, then Private Saving Private Ryan, Ryan was kind of the end because then you yeah. get to his weird. His weird I'm gonna do some hardcore sci-fi movies. You got your Catch Me in Your Can, the Terminals, where so he's in yeah, a yeah. weird like probing phase after that, right? Well, he does these. He does these really specific 
only Steven Spielberg can get the money to make these movies. Like right. War of the Worlds is a great example. Like he does War of the well, Worlds. That was his weird. Like, he's like, we need to hear what Steven Spielberg thinks about nine eleven. You're like, God, right. I, he wouldn't well, even again, make my like, top thousand. But War of the Worlds is like to me one of those things. Like Josh Friedman wrote that script. Like War of the Worlds is the one thing where I'm like. Only Steven Spielberg in 2005 would have been allowed to make War of the Worlds. Like, literally no other director would have been able to pull that off. Yeah, Because maybe. other directors would have made it not a Hollywood movie. I think that's a really specific Grittier. thing. Yeah. That's a really specific thing that Steven Spielberg was able to do after, like, AI. AI specifically. Because... AI is a Kubrick movie, and it's always going to be thought of as like a Kubrick movie, not a Steven Spielberg movie. It's this Kubrick movie that Steven Spielberg took over. It That's is like, the best movie to show someone if you want to give them an appreciation of what Kubrick was. Is Here's Kubrick done by another really great director, and it yeah. just has all of that. The only, right. yeah. But Hook. Hook. But Sorry. Hook. Now that we've done 20 but, minutes, but it's not is, about but, Hook. But it's like a really important thing to contextualize why Steven Spielberg thinks this is like one of his worst movies, which again is like what a great compliment to have is Hook's the worst movie you ever made. I I I think he's full of shit. Like I think yeah. I can imagine he doesn't love it like he does some of his other stuff. Sure. Look, it's all it's of adapting them have, an IP more than a all lot of, them of other have stuff. Their again. Warts and I can no, understand not really even. Yeah. All of them have their own warts. I what I can understand about Hook is that literally no subplot is not explored other than back in London. There is not a single subplot that is not explored in this movie. And that to me is always like the flaw in the film is I'm like, man, there are sections of this story. I don't give a shit about, and I don't understand well, why we're talking about like it. a microcosm of what's not great with this movie. Right. There are about 50 lost boys. It feels like in every scene, mm -hmm. there's about 10 of them. We recognize but maybe one of them, the whole movie, that matters at all? And if you think back, because Rufio was this fucking larger than life. When we were kids, me and my friends would do the Rufio, 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 Rufio. 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 Oh. We would do that all the fucking time. Absolutely. Shooting hoops, rollerblading, whatever. We were always doing Rufio. He was the fucking coolest. If you go back and rewatch that movie today, Rufio is barely in this fucking like, three-hour-long movie. Two and a half hours. Yeah. He's, he's not really a huge part of it. It's just when he's on there, he fucking eats. Yeah. And so you have all these fucking Lost Boys who are supposed to reignite something in, in Peter Pan, right? Right. But they're not given well, they're enough all... personality, right? And also, the journey should be his kids reawakening him, not right. the Lost Boys. Well, like, and there so, are enough Lost Boys to take on the entire pirate, like, city town yeah they they can overrun a municipality they That's can a overrun a, muni a small municipality and then at the end when peter pan flies away there's like 10 of them that are just standing around it's like where the yeah. other ones go yeah oh i did guess they, we're they, orphans again did oh, they all man. grow up what's going on <laughs> but that's what so it just it's this movie that just suffers from the disease of more yeah agreed. right because there, there's that's, so that's... many lost boys that we don't ever latch on to one of them yeah right tinkerbell comes in for these kind of poignant moments here and there where we're mm -hmm. going to give that character some context, but they always feel really shoehorned in. Yeah. Right? And so that's the other weird thing is, one, there's just there's, there's so much shit we never really latch on to anything. But here, here would be my counter argument to that. Never Never Land is a fucking, fucking childhood fantasy, right? It's, it's what the, awesome. It's what the child would create if, if a child was plugged into a Matrix machine and they're like, you can live wherever you want. I my my brain knows the steak's not real, but it again, tastes good. This is how children would live. Again, this is like one of those things where when Spielberg's like, I hid behind the production value, all my insecurities. I'm like, great hiding place. It was awesome. Thank you very much for yeah, getting out of the way. It worked out really well. I love the pirate <laughs> baseball game. Love that. It yeah. matters zero percent to the story, right? Yeah. But, but at the end, you get that cool. moment of Captain Hook going, "My Jack," and Robin Williams, right? Peter Pan going, "My Jack." My Jack. That's a good moment. This this Dude. script has so many great lines in it. Yeah. And so, yes, I, is it is it a mess? Is it big? But again, we don't need to go very in depth in the the fucking most shallow story that's ever been written. No, this is childhood playtime, man. This, like when we were kids, it was called Cowboys and Indians, right? Where you just run mm -hmm. around and you're pretending to be, have these great adventures. Yep, whatever yep. the fuck it is for like whatever generation, right? I didn't know anyone who loved Peter Pan. But apparently, like, the studios keep thinking we love Peter Pan. I think loving Peter Pan is a strange thing. Like, I've 
I, I mean, when I mean my first my first association with Peter Pan, I think like many people's the Disney movie, which is you know fucking terrible, like one of the worst movies I've ever sat through. Like a very <laughs> a very odd. When you're older, like when you're younger, and it's like, oh, cool, you watch Madeline, that whatever. movie, and you're like, Peter Pan is probably the biggest cunt that Disney's ever created. <laughs> yeah, it's take a, take aside like whatever Jake Paul's character was on Disney Channel. <laughs> like, yeah. he's just, he's like just Peter hateable. Pan, he's hateable. Peter Pan in Peter Pan in the cartoon movie is like the most like is the worst influencer that ever existed. It, I remember as a kid, it was this and Robin Hood were like the Disney movies my mom would put in, and I'd be like, fuck. Like, I was mad I had to watch them again. I mean, I liked... And then finally, like, it got to Little Mermaid, and my mom's like, well, you guys won't like it, you're boys. And we're like, this movie fucking rips compared to fucking Robin Hood and Peter Pan. And you can add I mean, Dumbo on that list, too. I was fucking sick of Dumbo by the end. I hated Dumbo. Always yeah. hated Dumbo. My mom and Rescuers dad Rescuers thought... Down Under, cheers from the crowd. Right? Rescue, like, is da- Rescue is Down yeah. Under was a hell of a There was some bangers film. in there. But yeah, it's yeah. just this weird fit. Fa- but Peter Pan is this weird thing. My kids were just telling me. I was watching it last night, and they're like, oh, is this part of the new fucking Peter? And I was like, I forgot there's a new Peter there's Pan. There's another one Law. that, like, David Lowry did. Yeah, like, why the fuck are we? I mean, every two or three years, there's another Peter Pan. I and I know it's because... an IP that you can just grab. Well, I mean, the, I can give you. the audiences have spoken. We fucking don't give a shit about Peter Pan. And honestly, come at me and fight me about this. I think this is the best Peter Pan movie. Oh, I mean, I I wouldn't disagree. I think by it's a awesome. lot. Like I don't this think is a really fucking close. I'll tell you this, and this is the thing that I think. Watching it now, I the emotional, and it's not just because I'm a dad now, but the emotional baggage that I had carried through this movie watching it, I was like, God damn, I am just like crying every yeah twenty minutes or so at this like guy who cannot get out of his own way because yeah. again, I. The top of this movie, it starts like, I don't think it's like the best. It's not my favorite. Like, until they get to Neverland, it's not my favorite John Williams scores, <laughs> score. But like, like that whole I opening think the sequence. score is really good, though. But yeah. Oh, no. The score is really this good. This is also a John Williams, like, your least favorite of his scores is still stunning at most. <laughs> I mean, here there. all the Neverland music is in, fucking incredible. But yeah. like, like, when things start getting, I think, it's, it's so funny. When things start getting weird, like when you start noticing that things are strange, that's when the music gets really good. But like whatever he scored this like opening with, which is like that that early nineties mu- music. It's the scene my buddy Rawson wrote in uh, fucking Central Intelligence, right? And he's like, I need a haircut that says I have a wife who doesn't appreciate me, kids that are bastards. I commute forty hours a week while I imagine chewing on a shotgun. The guy's like, right here. Right here, bud. Right like, here. <laughs> That's, the, yeah, that's, that's what this, that's like the but that's you the watch opener. this guy right he's at the play but he's answering a call in the middle of the Such play you're a like fucking dickhead you would get choked out for doing that right Absolutely. Some, some mom is gonna fucking rip your face off then it's like i'll be at your game my word is my bond and then we see him doing like the prickiest thing which is the the fucking cell phone holster for, yeah. he's missing the game right he's sending assistant the assistant to, go, to fucking he sends the assistant tape, yeah. late the late. assistant gets there for the last strikeout so he didn't even send the assistant prior so you're like, all right, we get it. And then I love when they get to London. He's kind of off put. Is Moira's like gallivanting through, like, this is my childhood. I love this yeah. house. She's um, like, and he's she's like yelling at the this, kids. Like, reemergence of child like fantasy, fantasy, right? And he's yelling at his kids like, "Fuck, leave me alone!" And it's fucking brutal. That's because really, his, his parents. That one you is do really that, hard. You do that where it's like even us, right? And we're not like fucking corporate raiders, but there are days you just get bogged down. I've absolutely, and I, I mean, had that my my kid. I was like one time. I can't remember. It was right after COVID. We're all like working harder again, mm-hmm. um, or like shit's picking up. And so now I have like social activities and more stuff on my calendar. Yeah. And my kid came in the room and he did the saddest thing. He's like, "Hey, Dad!" And it, he was trying to manipulate me first off. So don't feel that bad for him. He's got that Griffey <laughs> cunning. But he came in and he goes, "Dad, do you want to play catch with the the football?" And then he goes, "Oh wait, you can't. You're busy." And he walked out like he had done the like he's asked me so many times and I'm like, all right, in an hour. And he got me and I was like, well, now I'm quitting whatever I'm doing and I'm fucking whipping that football. Hey, <laughs> so yeah, ready. I'm had... throwing piss missiles. But that Early, that idea. Yeah. When I went started really like going back, like when I was because Andrea was still 
they still had the, sh- the store was still closed. So like I was the one who had to go, to, like I was going to the, I was going to set and working a lot. And I remember there were a couple of times where I lost it's my cool fucking in terrible, that way. Dude. And it's one of those things you never feel good about it. And like, it's instant remorse because the kids like, like looking at, like it was that, like that scene when Jack looks at Peter in like mortal fear, he goes, I'm sorry. Like he like instantly shrinks oh, and he he back into the kid. Yeah. You're just like Jesus uh, Christ, it's dude! Fucking how horrible. And then Moira. Moira also, said, you're like, I understand this guy's got a fucking job to do, but sure. But then Moira does that, like sends him out of the room, and Moira does yeah. that thing, like my I wife had to do this. to me. No, you, which was like because one time I I did like look, I'm not a perfect parent in the slightest. I fucking yelled at. I was like, get out of my face. He was only like three, but I was just oh, like, dude, you have dude, got to time. stop that. I saw a TikTok the other day of a dad who's just sitting there like on his phone. He looks like he hasn't slept in weeks, right? He's got a little baby who's crawling. <laughs> and the baby crawled over to him and just bit the tip of his dick with his brand new teeth. And the dad's, ah, 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 and he's screaming. And the mom runs in and goes, stop screaming. You'll, you're scaring him. And he yeah. just goes, my dick, the tip of my dick. And he's screaming. And I was like, that's parent life. <laughs> yeah, like it was one of those when Moira <laughs> sends the kids out of the room and she's like, "You are missing this. You this you, you only get this time for a little bit, and then right. eventually they don't want to be around you anymore." And then they it's, they it's, but again, you that's chasing what this movie after them. does well. This movie takes a look at the Peter Pan myth yeah. and says that it is how horse absurd shit, is this? Yeah, but absolutely. There, there is a, a I, moment of magic that it captures. It's it's about not getting stuck in routines, and so yeah. more than Moira. What this movie does so well at the start is that Maggie Smith is crushing it in this movie. Hey, is it Grandma crazy? Wendy. Is it insane to you that Maggie Smith, like, what is the old people makeup they put on her? Because she looks like she that looks now. She looks old as fuck. She like, looks she, like that no, now, though. Not even looks like that now. Like, she looks like, you know, the oldest fucking person you've ever seen. But what's crazy to me is she looks like that then. And yeah. then, like, she's McGonagall in And then, year, like, Potter. 10 years later, she looks, like, 50 years younger. Yeah. I was like, but no, what is going she's on? She's crushing it, right? She has these yeah. moments of just taking him in, right? The, hello, yeah, boy. Yeah. I fucking love it. Chill City still. Yeah, when she's so. silhouetted coming down the stairs, right? It's it's this wonderful this moment. This movie is shot. And then she does hello, boy. And he goes, yeah. hey, what's up? He Like, she sees in his eyes that he's gone, right? And she goes, oh, Peter, you've become a pirate. Yeah. And then when she's outside of the room hearing him unleash on his kids over this fucking deal with the owls and whatever, yeah. her face, I was like, that's that's cinema right there, man. You just hold on a fucking wonderful performance with the subtext of what's happening in the back, and you, you just fucking tell the story, man. Like, that shit is wonderful. It's awesome. Right? The invasion of the house has, like, that classic kind of Spielbergian, right? Like, Close Encounters, Green Lights, whatever, they're gone. Really cool. But that's funny. That that opening is so fucking good and just kind of emotionally taut. I thought it worked really well. And then... And then Neverland happens, man. Um, <laughs> and the problem is, yeah, the journey to Neverland is one he doesn't want to take. Mm. He gets dragged there. And then we just do this long, long... Like, they say it's three days, but it feels like watching it for three days segment of, like, him trying to become Pan again. Yeah. Well, and so there, there is a you know like the fucking well, you're surfing skipping. boards. There, there's a lack of propulsion that is pretty huge in the movie. But there's there's one section particular. You're skipping like the in the the hook intro, by the way, which is okay. And also, let's just get this out up front. I fucking love what Dustin Hoffman and Bob Dustin Hoffman, Hoffman are down. is. Dustin Hoffman and Bob's, Bob Hoskins saved him. this fucking movie. If like, he's look, Robin Williams needs him. no help. Robin Williams None. is incredible. He's great. If there's one thing, but Robin Williams is like, like Robin Williams is a great lead for this. They even make Smee a whoremonger. Yeah, like the whores the, all see him coming and they're like, "Ooh, Smee's coming." They're getting Smee. all pumped up, and he's like, "Ooh, ooh," and I was like, "Yes." The yes! only way, <laughs> I was like, the Give me only more of this way Smee. though, that Robin Williams can like do what Robin Williams does is if he's countered by someone like Dustin Hoffman and yeah. Bob Hoskins, who he's doing that great big like slay. Frankenhooker, right? Like Frankfurter totally. Hook, right? He he's yeah. doing a, a fucking Rocky Horror Picture Show performance. Yeah, I mean, in the middle of this Peter Peter Pan movie, Dustin Hoffman is so fucking good dude it scared so the shit out of me when i was a kid so good. and i just look at it and just appreciate the hell out of it now because it is just like every whatever 
every line out of his mouth. Like that Glenn Close cameo. First off, when I was a kid, I had no fucking idea because I just wasn't. I had no that idea. Kind of that's one of those things I saw in college and I was like, holy shit, man. Like, yeah, that's right? crazy that Glenn Close is playing like the 55th pirate. Great. Well, but like, <laughs> and I fucking love the that scene because he's sitting there and he goes, you said I couldn't do it. Yes, you made a poop. Yeah, but also oh, just God. like the red stairs that he then like stomps so Peter Pan can't walk. Like, there's just a lot of just weird so shit. so many great little I love the scene when, when he's in his thing and he's like, yes, we've come to the end. My life is over. And he's that like, don't is... stop me. Don't stop me. Smee, what are you stop doing? Me. Smee, stop what are you doing? Stop me. That stop is me. And he's like, do you know of... how serious? I mean, that is one of my. So this is the thing I don't understand about like the critique, like the Spielberg critique and honestly people's problem with Neverland stuff is I'm like, these characters are all doing things that like are propelling their character forward. Like. It is absolutely 1,000%. The Peter Pan story yeah. is the most textual child story of all time. Like, all absolutely. Of them are. But, like, yeah. and what's fascinating to me and what I like is that it do, it's not just saying, like, oh, and look, I get it. Captain Hook motivation, sure, is kind of wonky. Because you're just like, are you just a guy who wants to fight kids? Weird. That's <laughs> it. Dude, that's exactly what he it. is, though. <laughs> Never, yeah, never land. The point. Again, this gets back is to a Peter Pan is the fucking dumbest story that we latch on to. But that's, I think that's it's like about, is... It's about being trapped in time periods, right? Yes. So when you're exactly. trapped as the old man who can't get it back. When you're you trapped hate children, in the past. Yeah, you Absolutely. hate children because they have something you'll never have again. So your job is to destroy them. Like right? That... People who are on HOAs. People who go to school so like, I think we should burn this book because kids can't yeah. handle ideas. Like, well, you can't handle ideas. You're old and cremogeny. So the Lost Boys and the Pirates are the exact same thing, just at the end of the spectrums. Sure. And, like, the way Dustin Hoffman is doing Hook, I don't need a lot of motivation for Captain Hook. Like, I get it. But that's because the story's not about Captain Hook. Captain Hook just serves as this counterpoint to what we all need right. Peter to remember Hoffman who he is. Dustin Hoffman fucking eats, so we want more of that. Yeah, of course. If that was sure. a normal Captain Hook, no one would give a shit. But because Dustin Hoffman is fucking feasting, so good, yeah, you're like, you know what? Honestly, it's called Hook. I would have been fine if he was just the whole movie. Yeah, <laughs> that, like that's a that version I would have watched. I'm gonna tell you, I even as a kid, I fucking like that was a moment where I'm like, oh wow, this is like a really cool writing thing, acting thing coming together. <laughs> Stop me, Smee. Don't stop me, Smee. I'm going to do it this time. Don't stop. stop and Bob Hoskin is like, let's play with your little boats. And so you're like, they've fucking done that. They played with those boats. Yeah. Like, and him awesome. and Bob Hoskins are just putting the work in and making yeah. you like, well, damn, even dude. him seeing Peter Banning and he's like, he's so fucking crushed. He's so, it's so, because it's so it's depressing. Weirdly, yeah. Peter Pan is this fucking totem of, of fucking infantilization, right? Right. But and to, it's like but the to last... Hook, he sees him as the one. He's not a lost boy. He's Peter Pan. He's Peter he literally Pan. Literally soars above. Yeah. Even though they hate each other, he is Hook's belief that there can be something more. Yeah. Than being it's stuck the in great, these. It's these the movies. great battle. It's the last war. It's the yeah. great war. It's the one he wants. Like I think that is my my favorite part about Captain Hook in this movie is that all he wants is not a fair fight. He wants a great fight. A great yeah. battle. He, to die he does would be give him the days. He wants Peter Pan. He doesn't want to just he kill wants a Peter fucking Pan. lawyer. Absolutely. And that's right? what was he so de that's what's him. so depressing. He's like, I had him right there. Why didn't I just do it then? I was like, I could have just well, done it. I could have just done it right there. That scene also, again, this is another thing where I'm like, I don't believe that Spielberg's like, I didn't get the material. Peter Banning, that's horseshit. When when the Captain Hook's like, look at what you've become, you sad, pathetic bastard. Yeah. And he's like, climb up there and touch your kid's hand. And through his own smallness and his I'm I'm afraid of heights. I couldn't do it. Yeah. Right. But watching them watch and they're ashamed that Peter Pan can't do it is he then looks at his kids. Right. And Jack goes, don't give up. And Maggie's oh, like, mommy could do it. And it's like, oh, brutal. Little. And it's like, brutal. also, it's like, hey, man, could you fucking swing the net closer? Could you fucking try a little bit? You <laughs> could useless. you help? Yeah. How about you help? Yeah. How about you help a little bit? Team effort here, guys. <laughs> I know that you've had a nanny your whole life, but could you fucking try to help in these streets? Please. Please, God. I was raised in these streets. I need your help. <laughs> but just that that scene of like Hook looking up at the guy who used to fly above him and instill wonder and being let down. And the yeah. kids looking at the face of their father who's willingly giving up on them. Not that he could have done anything. He gets what he's shooting. 
don't fucking miss me with this these complicated themes i couldn't quite this isn't no. fucking you know melancholia this is not a fucking yeah, no. abstract I, art I, house ex examination i think to say you don't get the materials pretty disingenuous like the it's, concepts it's, are that's what i mean easy. though spielberg has i love steven spielberg but he has this thing of rewriting history yeah that is kind of annoying if things about it didn't work, just say I like this. It didn't work, right? We did. We made some mistakes. He understands because that scene is really fucking good. And as a father, yeah. I watched that, and it was really affecting. I think what's fascinating about this whole month we've done now is, <laughs> I don't know. Like, to it me, would be interesting if we had done this three years ago, not post Fablemans. Yeah, I think that is the really fascinating thing about this entire month is how odd it's been to watch yeah. these movies and not think <laughs> about the Fablemans because yeah. you realize how much, how badly he needed, I guess, how just tucked away the story of the Fablemans was for him. But and this it's is really he had to go out and make his movie fortunes, but he could still be a good dad. This has all of those touchstones of Steven Spielberg. Like I'm cramming my personal stuff in. Yeah. Yeah. To this big and, fantasy adventure, which to me is that's what's disingenuous about saying, like, I don't right. like this movie because I didn't. You're telling it. me like, he doesn't bro, understand the journey that Peter this Banning's has on all the scenes. That Captain also, Hook is not a fucking evil studio exec. Are you yeah, fucking kidding? Come me? on, man. Are Get you the fuck fucking out of here. kidding me? Get the fuck out of here with that. Like, there are... He is literally... He Captain is Peter Hook Banning. is gallivanting around this fucking giant gaudy tell set. Me, <laughs> tell me how fucking obvious it is that, like, this whole thing is a microcosm of his career in a way because it's yeah. about... It's about... How do you stay true to... How do you stay true to the story? How do you stay true to your product? How do you stay true to the storytelling that you love in the face of corporate giants in the face of all these yeah. things like can you can you try to retain this like right. childlike love of cinema yeah it's a love letter to the Please. fact that people used to say that he could only make these empty childhood movies and then all of a sudden the put upon fucking mega captain of industry appears in a fucking sh big shellacked version of a steven spielberg movie <laughs> right and he doesn't understand the deep and complicated themes of what's happened. Like, what the fuck right. are it's you talking bizarre. about? I think. What are you talking about? It took me. So, okay. That's the shit I can't. I can't yeah, no, stand I, artists that go back and like repropaganda what happened. Yeah. I think the self reflection's pretty he obvious. He thought this was going to crush on the level of E.T. and everything else he did. And if it did, he would have been like, it was just magical to work with right. Robin. It all, all came. These all this boils down to is he didn't like the fact that he got bad reviews. So exactly. That's what I'm saying. He's fine. I just, I, Either that's way. the one thing about, and I think this is kind of a really cool thing about movies. And this is why it got so hotly contested when him and Lucas, like we're going to go back in and tinker with our movies. Yeah. It's because there is an, a thing that is hard for some artists to accept. Right. Which is once you give it out to the world, it's as much ours as it is yours. Right, you don't get to tell me the hook that I love sucks. There is a an, 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 a concept, right, that when you're a filmmaker, in a way, you are in the service industry, yeah. right? You're out there fucking refilling the chocolate fondue station, right? Me and my kids have got five fingers in it each. Don't tell me it's bad for me. Just keep fucking pouring the chocolate. You know what I mean? I'll carry my way to the manager if you tell me that this is not good. I'm here for the fun. And so when he put that into the world, and I as a kid took it and loved it. Yeah. I fucking hate when he goes back and he's like, well, oh, this, that, that, that. It's like, you made exactly the movie you thought you were making. You just got pushback because it's a bloated mess at times. And you didn't like that. He understood. Those scenes of watching him, right, with the Lost Boys. Mm -hmm. And him being scared of everything, right? And Rufio fucking with him. And then that scene when he starts insulting Rufio. And that wonderful moment where he flicks the spoon and the fucking food actually hits Rufio. Yeah. From that moment on, the movie fucking rips again. Totally. Because now, now he's understanding, right? The moment when he's like, my happy thought, right? And a thing that is exactly Dude. like the ending of Train to Busan, which kills me. Which is, I remember why I wanted to grow up. Yeah. Because I wanted to be a dad for this kid, man. That That's, I was crying. Like that oh, fucking, dude, I, that's my happy thought, right? Like that, that shit works. Don't tell me that you didn't get yeah. what you were making. Don't tell me you understand. Yeah, like that, that moment, particularly that, that beat is just, 
Those big of scenes don't come together on accident, though. It and was well written, and just... he shot the fuck out of it. Yeah, it was great. It's, that like montage of Peter remembering, like, oh, I'm actually like. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> we Peter do have to pause. There, there is this very strange, like, weird sexuality that is also kind of tickling through this movie. <laughs> French tickling its way through the... So the first off, when Wendy's like, Moira, can you leave the room? Oh, Peter, remember when we used to fucks in Neverland? And he's like, ew, gross. Granny, Wendy, what the fuck? Like, did you diddle? Is that when I was a fucking boy? She's like, Peter, do you remember back when I could get wit? Wit? <laughs> it's so strange. Oh, yeah. And then she's, later, when she's he's having his now? flashback memories, right? Yeah, right. Uh, I guess she's... Yeah, she's British. Yeah, I like that Wendy's Very now in a similar. Tennessee... It's all about like putting on airs. I like that Wendy's in a cat in a hot tin roof now. Yeah. It's all about putting on airs. <laughs> right? It's all about it's vapors. All... British Ooh. vapors, Southern... Oh, my lanta. Oh, I'm so... Oh, my lanta. I'm so... Vapors. Yeah. Oh, Peter. Ooh. Yeah, bring, bring that thimble over here to catch this moisture. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> give me a thimble. Ooh. Yeah. I'm going to fill that thimble up with drips. But yeah, it's so gross, right? She's pretty much like, remember when we used to bang? And then Peter comes back and she's like, I'm old. And he's like, ew, gross. And she's like, I have grandkids now, dude. You missed a couple springs. I'm old as shit yeah. now. And he goes, fine. Then I'm going to plant one on your sleeping 14-year-old granddaughter. 14-year-old granddaughter. And she just Not watches. Cool. She just watches and is almost like, damn, that's nice. Yeah. So this orphanage becomes a fucking fantasy brothel. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm not gonna lie to you. Whoever plays the young, who ever plays young Peter Pan, by the way, I don't know who that actor is, but it looks exactly like Ryan Reynolds. Always thought it was Ryan Reynolds. Isn't Ryan Reynolds? Does obviously. look a little Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, looks like Ryan Ryan Reynolds. But that Always that is a me. very weird subplot. Is that she essentially just like fucking? Well, between him, that, like have at it, and then Tinkerbell desperately I was gonna say, being between like, God, that I fuck. and Tinkerbell really badly wanted to fuck Peter. Yeah. Or like when he first sees her in the Firefly from Hell scene, and he's like, "You do have great legs, great small legs." Yeah. I mean, yeah, Jesus, it's like, but, but all right, what? <laughs> you hitting on ch you hitting on children's flights of fancy? Very cool, there, though. The weird sexuality is definitely something that kind of well, jumped then out. She to me. like so she makes a wish for herself, grows to the size of Julia Roberts, right? Gives a kiss, yeah. and he's like, "Oh, cool, I love." Moira. And I love Julia Sorry, Roberts. This Bell. isn't going to work. She's for me. great at this. She's great. There Did is a know? moment, though. He goes back in for a kiss, right? Yeah. And she's like, fuck yeah. We're going to we're gonna fucking get we're around gonna, him. We're gonna I'm going to fucking yeah. cover him in dust, dude. It's going to be yeah. great. And then all of a sudden he goes, wait, Moira. And she yeah. goes, all right, fine. I save love your kids. Moira. Fine. Fuck it. Save if your kids. If he would have fucking dropped the coconut sword in the sheath, do you think she's just like, hook and kill these kids? I don't care. <laughs> we're going to be shaking <laughs> this canopy for the rest of time. <laughs> There's a real part of it where it's like, mm. and then it, when he's like, I got to go save my kid. She's like, fine. Even though you saw me fight like Mighty Mouse, I'm not going to help. Cause I like the fuck. idea that it's, <laughs> I got to go, I got to go save my kids. Peter, it's been seven days. They're dead. You know, like a whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, here's their heads. What? Sorry, P How did you get sorry, us? Sorry, I Peter. We've been getting we've been getting down, girl. I don't know what to we've been getting down. You know you I'm never liked Jack. Bit, bit, bit. I beheaded yeah. him for our love. And he's like, oh my God, he's rock hard. Oh in his, God. Little, his little spandex. <laughs> yeah, right true infantilization no, there it, it is weird because we like tinkerbell but then all of a sudden she's like well i didn't get the dick so like did I'll you, let know, you go fight I, on your own and then I was she saves about, him at the end I, but i was reading about this i didn't know apparently julia roberts and spielberg did not get along like he apparently was very mean to her while they were shooting this wow like he, it's one of the few stories you've heard where people do not get along with spielberg and he even cops to it too he's like i wasn't nice to her like i don't know what to say i was just going through some bad shit and I made See, I made that set very unpleasant for yeah, him. Yeah, maybe he was just in a moment, and so this movie's bonded to a thing he doesn't... Could be. I, Whatever. I mean, why not? But Fair. yeah, the weird sexuality is something for sure. It's very it's strange. a strange thing. It, it, like, but it's in I there. Think this, is, this is something that I think is really fascinating about... This is something well, I really a lot pick, of people I, think that the Hook and Smee relationship shows that, too. Yeah, a little bit, sure. That's like this a is popular uh, online theory I've heard. There's something that picked I picked up on this time, though, that is really fascinating to me about the lost boys because like the way that they're always peppered is that they are just it's not even like lost boys is a strange is a like such an adult terminology for these children like they're orphans well i was like does tinkerbell just run around the multiverse grabbing orphans and bringing them back oh i mean i assume that's what or was, it was peter the only human 
who got brought here, that's why he's Peter Pan and has I think powers. Peter was, I think Peter was the first one to be brought Well, back. also, I was like, damn, these are fucking orphans eating imaginary food. I'm like, could we give them some they dust tell so the they story Because they tell the story and then also dispel the... Um, <laughs> they tell the story of how... when, we get, when Yes, Peter we has, get the Oswald Cobblepot backstory. Yeah, I was going to say, when we, we find out We have to that, pause for a second. That, that carriage rolled down the hill, right? It crashed still on the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> when we find out that Peter is actually like over a hundred years old, which is like a whole new, which is like a whole new thing, because <laughs> like, yeah, because he got paused I mean, in Neverland. Yeah, he got paused in Neverland, which is fascinating. Um, well, I think the theory that that the fucking carriage rolled down what is still the exact same cobblestone street, he crashed and was just getting poured on rain in a thing that had lampposts and yeah. a fucking decorative like stone circle. What does his that parents, tell you about his parents saw the carriage roll and they just go eh. Yeah, he could have possibly you about the wor- have been even a hundred. What does feet that tell you away? about the world of London at that time? But this is so. This is what I was. Do you think his mom was over there, like <laughs> blowing the <laughs> carriage to start? She's like, "Oh no!" Oops. But this is this is what I was getting at. Like the idea of like the Lost Boys in this movie is really yeah. interesting because to me, yeah, like there are way too many of them for being just like ten at the end that actually matter. But every time one of them sort of relinquishes the truth about themselves or like their wish. It's always for a parent. Like yeah. this is like a huge thing to me. And like, cause they've always been painted throughout all the other versions of the story as I don't want to grow up. Oh, that's oh, growing up is bullshit. Oh, I don't want to be a part of that. What's beautiful about this movie and what really does something and like leads to this sort of like Neverland is not this place of wish fulfillment, but Neverland's this place where wishes have to just stay wishes. It's limbo. It's this, yeah, this limbo is that like Thud and Rufio both have these beautiful moments where like, like Thud's like, you know, my, you know, my happy thought is it's my mother. Do you remember your mother, Peter? And I mean like that when Rufio like gives his like deathbed confession, like Jesus uh, Christ, man, I when fucking When Rufio, sobbed. cause there's that scene when Pan's you like, I'll take wish? him and he hears yeah. Maggie and he just immediately fucking bails on Rufio without thinking twice. Yeah. Which most dads would do. But yeah, Rufio, I would, look, I would Hook do. just starts going, Rufio. And you see his fucking electric smile. Dude, Dante Bosco is so Dude, good. When I was a kid, he was on the level of like Indiana Jones, the Ninja Turtles, like the coolest characters. I'm like, I want to be that. I wanted to fucking be Rufio, Rufio. Yeah, totally. so fucking bad. I fucking it, love Rufio in this. That movie. is like one of his like, that is a, such a great moment. And when too, he got got, just, it fucking hurt. Like, even as it a hurts, child, man. I was fucking wrecked when that happened. Well, I mean, no other... I think this is a, like, really fascinating thing is, like, no other children commit... None of the children, none of the Lost Boys commit acts of murder. They just, like, basically subdue the pirates with eggs yeah. and marbles and shit. We definitely see Peter Pan kill a pirate. Peter Pan kills some people, for sure. <laughs> right. And they hint at that people die in this fucking battle and Hook has been maimed. Yeah. yeah, there is, like, right when the fight starts, like, there's an obvious shot of Peter Pan, like, well, that guy's dead. Like, that Just guy's 100% running a guy dead. through. Just... <laughs> yeah, that guy's dead, for sure. That guy died. And you're like, oh, and then after anything after that, they're like, cobweb armor, right? Fucking, yeah. you know, imaginary fruit balls. It's like, all right, that's funny. Thud Chicken Butt eggs, doing, all these Thud cool Butt things. did the ball and rolled, Yeah, that was the coolest shit ever. Great, like, we, great I beat. fucking love Thud in this movie. Yeah. And I loved so Rufio. Good. I love the little Lost Boy. That scene really meant the world to me rewatching it when they're drawing the lines. Oh, and that dude, one that little boy best. starts moving his big, bulbous adult face, which you're like, yep, <laughs> relate to that for sure. Yeah, right. And, uh, right. you yes. know, I'm under here somewhere. Yeah, my, my cheekbones are in here, I swear to God. And he's like, well, and he starts moving his fucking bulbous cheeks and he just goes, oh, there you are, Peter. Oh, that crushed me. Yeah. Because I was like, it's... I think all of us have this. We want to be adult in the sense because society tells us we have to have jobs and respect and earn money to pay for shit we don't need mm-hmm. but you you like to imagine you still have a little spark yeah. you're still dangerous to have a good time right like if it pops off because i think a lot of us just remember that we come home and there's dad on the couch drinking a beer he's got to go to bed so he can get up at 5 a.m to work and repeat 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 right yeah and so you just that that fear of becoming that and that idea, because Robin Williams had that quote, because I never forget when we found out he died, we were in the parking lot behind the NoHo 7, mm-hmm. and I just couldn't get out of the car. I just sat in the car and cried, and yeah. I watched him Robin Williams clips crying. 
Um, and one of the quotes that I remember reading around that time was he's like, you only have that one spark of madness and your job is just to protect it and don't let it go yeah. out. Right. Some, just... I'm, I'm butchering the quote, but the idea is we all have that thing that we need to protect. And so many of us don't. Yeah. He's just so <sighs> he's the only person who could have done it. And the... what's weird and this is something that I remember as a kid because I, I was it's like he's just such a he's the only actor who could have pulled this off and made he was it a feel, living cartoon and, and not in the way that Jim Carrey real. was. Yeah, no, like he made this person real like this, like this version of Peter Pan felt real because we felt like we felt this regression like we were like, oh, my God, he did grow up and like that's bad or like the concept of growing up felt not dangerous but da like not dangerous to children but just like oh is that what happens when we all stop believing in things that maybe are not for adults quote so to speak but i don't know if you remember this cuz i i also loved the toys like the toy thing was obviously a big yeah. deal like the sword was awesome but i loved the, coconut the action sword figures is still like to me like a top 10 item of my childhood yeah Getting the, like, I got the Rufio toy, which was a big deal. Like, I was Fucking like, I gotta right. get that Rufio toy. But then the Peter Pan toy. This is a really fascinating, and I'm not, I'm not sure exactly why. The Peter Pan toy. But they didn't have the licensing for the main character of their movie? <laughs> well, it, I don't know why, but it never looked like. No, it's really bad if you Google it. It doesn't look like Robin Williams. Like, all the other ones look like the character's. Robin the Ro like the Peter Pan toy looks like a young dude and I've always tried to figure out why that was the reason like either Robin Williams wouldn't allow licensing for his likeness or did they just say Robin Williams looks too Robin Williamsy and we can't make that into a toy that children will buy like that was always my I was like why does he like why does this look it's like probably this? just they went with a company that sucked it making action figures and it's like no eh. but like not even the design like if you look at it even the design is different i don't even remember character. who put those out i don't either but, but i mean the design it's not mcfarlane toys or anything it was the right. design <laughs> it's the design of peter pan is different from the movie in a way that i'm like why is this like this like i've always well, there was something curious. where like there was one where he had armor if i remember you're like peter pan doesn't wear no armor but well, yeah, but that we was used like to that make was that like, armor out of cardboard. I always thought that right. scene was cool as fuck. But oh yeah, when he like when I think the stepping through the cobwebs. Uh, like, again, I like, there's cool. such cool shit in here. This is what I mean, though. He made exactly the movie he set out to make, which was childhood fantasy. I watched yeah. it as a kid, and I was like, "Fuck yeah!" I watched it as an adult, and I was like, "Man, I got to do better. Like, I need to yeah. be better at like protecting my kids' youth and sharing that Same. with them." Right. Same. Same. And I, I literally I think that fucking works, hugged man. my kid after this. I was yeah. just like, I love you, buddy. And when he Do says, right, we see fucking Captain Hook at the end, this fucking mean guy without his wig. And he's yeah. still fucking at what would the world be like without Captain Hook? And there's the weird thing where like the croc is like this big statue, but he moves and looks at. But you're like, it's a fucking dream world. It's a fucking dream world. Who cares? Right. And then at the end, it's like he's telling us it's all real because we have the marbles and stuff. But for some reason, every scene we see is in that room somewhere. The hook yeah. is the latch, the boat up above the window. Uh, -huh. uh Smee is the the town cleaner. Yeah, yeah, right? whatever. At the end. Is. So it's like, why are you telling us it's not real when we spent the whole movie that it's real? But what doesn't matter. What happens at the end is when those kids wake up and the mom sees them. Oh my god. And then when god, he runs dude. in and gives them a kiss. That shit's great. And even though it's dumb that Toodles is fucking doing spins on Big Ben, yeah. Right. Is that final line a little too cheesy? Oh, I think to live would be a great adventure. Yeah. But you're sure. remaking a fucking dumb, cheesy British children's book. Yeah. You know, it's just that sentiment, though, of him like, I got to go climb a drain pipe. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah. That's like, he the learned, way to be. He man. learned the important yeah. lesson of that. I think the important lesson is to. And not, when Wendy yeah. just says, hello, boy, and he says, hello, Wendy lady. Yeah. Right. The lesson is to not forget. Again. And he's it's like, not, remember not, when you like fucking. You know, meat marketing your granddaughter to me. Yeah, weird. Thank you for but, that, you know, Wendy. Wendy, remember thank that, you. By the way, I, I totally married her. I did the right thing after yeah. I definitely knocked her up because I didn't know how condoms worked in the Were 60s. you probably watching through a peephole like Norman Bates? Yes. Yes, you were. <laughs> probably, Grandma Wendy. That's why you're so old. <laughs> That's why you're so desiccated. <laughs> Beyond your years. No, I just... I, I think the slander, because I, I was telling you this part of why we picked it, is I didn't realize it was a popular movie to hate on. 
I didn't. Either, I just assumed everyone we liked it because I liked it as a kid. And then I found mm-hmm. out Spielberg is leading the charge of being a hater on it. Yes, it's, it's a big, nothing. messy movie. Yes, it should be an hour shorter. But, dude, what fucking Smee's doing? What Captain Hook's doing? The pirate baseball is a fucking great scene, even though it has no reason to be in the movie. Right? Like, there's, I just love the fucking elements of this movie. And at the middle of it, there's just these fucking great performances, right? We get Rufio. You get fucking Peter Banning into Peter Pan as Robin Williams, right? Captain Hook, Smee. I just love these guys. I love Thud, right? So it's. I love this Maggie Smith fucking crushes this movie. So whatever its problems are, don't tell me that Steven Spielberg didn't know what kind of movie he's making because it works exactly as it's supposed to. Mr. Spielberg, I know you listen to our pod every I, week. I hope I gotta that tell someday you, he does get great. a rewatch this and enjoys it. Me too. Because he made a great film. I gotta great tell you, this film. movie's great. A great film with problems, but you know what? That's every single That's fucking every film. Except for Highlander. But, you know, one in a million. Shot in the dark. Who knew? Mr. Spielberg, it's okay. I'll give you a hug. It's okay. I know you listen to our pod. We, we've just done a month of Spielberg. We've done a lot of other Spielbergs and other curations, right? Jaws and Jurassic Park and this and yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. He's just the, the language of cinema that I fucking first fell in love with. Yep. He's one of the guys that made the first movies that made me sit in awe. As he talks about in his documentary, is when he saw Lawrence of Arabia and it like changed him. That's how I felt when I saw his movies as a kid. Even movies he produced, they had that vibe, that th- still that felt magic, that way. Mm-hmm. right? Whether it was Poltergeist or The Goonies and stuff Goonies, that he just had his hands in. He just it's right a vibe. where it, there was just this magic that ran through all of these movies I loved as a kid, and he was a it's part of a people, lot of those. Man, it's why people use his name to yeah describe things. I watch his movies like the characters that do the Spielberg shot, the slack jawed all. That's how I, his movies are experienced to me normally. Yeah. And even as I'm aging and getting more cynical, I still fucking feel the magic of this man. So I love him very much. I will hope he makes fucking a hundred more movies, even though they're uncle movies now, but maybe I'm aging into that too. Maybe someday I'll give a fuck about a horse during a war. I don't know. Who knows? It's possible. But anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, our trip to Spielberg. I thought it was a great curation. We have some really fun stuff. Next month, the pod's on summer break. The pod's on summer break. We'll have another movie uh, for you before that. We're selecting it now. Uh, But yeah, next month we're doing Stand By Me, Dazed and Confused, The Way, Way Mm -hmm. Back, and Dirty Dancing. We're getting up to shenanigans in between school seshes. Indeed. Uh, So again, guys, if you could be so kind as to support the show... Film Alchemist Pod slash or Patreon.com slash Film Alchemist Pod. That's the one. Patreon.com slash Film Alchemist Pod. Best way to support and grow the show. We got tons of good stuff over there for you. We'll work really hard to make that worth your while. We'll keep doing that too. And if you go over there, you can let us know. Right? Subscribe to the YouTube. Like all the socials. Email the show, Film Alchemist Pod at gmail.com. Leave those ratings and reviews, whatever you can do to help the cause. But more than anything, thanks for spending time with us. Bye! To Pod will be a great adventure. Eh. Eh. <laughs> Didn't work then either. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>